Today I'm going to do a little video on the old school way that they used to split a stone. And they used to use what, what they called plug and feathers. And they drill a hole and they put these wedges down in there and they drop it in and they'd hammer it and then the stone would break. The thing I want to start with is they don't, they don't do that anymore. Now anymore they have big saws, they go in, they saw it right out and then they thermal face it. So what I'm going to do is first is let's go around and look at some examples where they were still using that. We're at Lake Scranton, Pennsylvania and when they made this dam years ago, that's the dam, you can see these marks in the stones. They're wedges and feathers that they used. And we'll look at a couple more samples. I'm going to show you how they did that. On this side you can see where they did it. See they wanted to split these stones a certain size. So if you can see the building up there, this is built 1898. And we go over here and you can see all where they, they wedged and they chiseled these stones out. So we're going to go to one of my favorite churches in uh, Pittston, Pennsylvania. It was probably finished in 1889. Now we look, we could see here's one. Then we can get up in here. Here's another one. Here's one. We get over here in the side of the church. Here's a couple. You can see them. So now we're going to go to a old railroad bridge and look at the stones under here. And here they are. You see it? All the stones under here, they got them over here, I see some. So they used this a lot in the old days. Here you could see some again. So now when you see this stuff, you know what you're looking at. Now before they came out with pneumatic tools, they used a star chisel. It's just a little point with a star in it. Let me show you how that worked. Now if they wanted to put a hole in a stone, they would get the star chisel. They'd start and they just keep turning it. And as you turn it and keep hitting it, that'll drill a hole into the stone. And you can see how it's going. It's going pretty good. That's how they would do it, a uh, hole in the stone. Of course, they don't do that anymore. Then they came out with pneumatic tools and they put the star drill in there. And that'd save them a lot of time. And then modern days, we just get ourselves a little masonry drill bit and we start. So now I got my three holes drilled and when we put these things in, you put them in like this and you put the wedge between them. You got to do it in such a way that you don't lose this. You see that? You can lose that down inside the stone. So what they do is when you buy them, you get these little rubber things that come with it. You just shove it in the stone like that. The same thing with this one. Then, you just tap it. So you get it evenly. Okay, now I'm just going to tap it. The stone's gonna break. That's how they did that. So after the stone broke and they got to use it, then they'd have to rock face it. So depending on how big the stone is, you get your pitching tool like this and you rock face it. Now sometimes you can lose, sometimes you can lose those lines, but sometimes you don't. They're stuck inside. Do it this way. Maybe we could save a little bit. See? They still show, once in a while, they still show inside a rock face stone. So my friend Wayne Faree, who was a carver on the National Washington Cathedral, also did a little video on splitting the stones this way. And he did this kind of thing all his life. So we'll show that and then I'll do a little talking at the end. This is kind of an irregular stone, but just listen to the sound of this as we tap. There it 
there she goes. So if you're out and about and you ever see a stone that looks like this, you'll know why it looks like that. Now we're gonna look at a stone right here. I'm uh, down with Wayne Faree and they cut the stones this way. They drilled in and then they put their plug and feathers all the way around it and they got a straight and clean cut. So that's a couple small demonstrations on how they used to split the stones to make them a certain width like they did on that dam and on those railroad bridges. That's the way they used to do it. Anymore they saw everything and then they thermal face it. So you don't see that kind of work but when you go around looking now you'll know what to look at. Also uh, Wayne Faree was in Indiana and he went and did a tour at a Bybee Stone Company and they've been in business since the 1860s and it, it shows you them carving inside and everything that's one of the things I got on my list to do and he did another video on stone corner moldings so check out his channel I think that's real important if you're a stone mason you gotta know how they did all this kind of old stuff and how they they do a new school now so that's it. I'm Mike Haddock, and I'll see you next video.